It is one thing to hear an artist playing for a few friends, quite another to hear him before an audience. It is a different occasion and a different artist. The beautiful, bright rooms illuminated by candlelight, the bejeweled and decorated patrons, all stimulate the giver as well as the given. The demon began to flex his muscles. He first played along with them, as if to feel them out, and then gave them a taste of something more substantial until, with his magic, he had ensnared each and every one and could move them this way or that as he chose. It is unlikely that any other artist, excepting only Paganini, has the power to lift, carry, and deposit an audience in such high degree. A Viennese writer has celebrated Litz in a poem, consisting of nothing but adjectives, beginning with the individual letters of his name. It is a tasteless thing as poetry, but there is something to be said for it. Just as we are overwhelmed in leafing through a dictionary by an onslaught of letters and definitions, so in listening to Litz are we overwhelmed by an onslaught of sounds and sensations. In a matter of seconds, we have been exposed to tenderness, daring, fragrance, and madness. The instrument glows and sparkles under the hands of its master. This has all been described a hundred times, and the Viennese, in particular, have tried to trap the eagle in every possible way, with winged pursuit, with snares, with pitchforks, and with poems. It simply has to be heard and seen. The editor, Robert Schumann, 